Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study at Berea Church of God in Christ. I'm Pastor Reginald Boswell, and we have a wonderful lesson on today. We're going to be dealing with uh, darkness and ignorance. Dealing with ignorance and darkness. Now, years ago, I thought of why, why is there um, darkness? Why do evil things happen? Actually, it came to the point where I was questioning where did it evil come from? Why do people kill babies and why why do all this thing why do all these things happen? Mm -hmm. And as a young man, I questioned a lot of things and it was a young lady, uh, Sister Angles in the church I went to who started to discuss angels, 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 angels and that subject just totally enraptured my mind um, and we had a Bible study in our church and and they sprung up the name Lucifer mm. and this is where it all started this is where ignorance started this is where darkness started with that one angel Lucifer mm. and we're going to have uh, our lovely wife Carolyn Boswell, First Lady Evangelist Carolyn Boswell, read us some scriptures today, and we're going to uh, go right, jump right in, and we're going to do Genesis 1 and 1, and go down to verse 3, please. All right, Genesis 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Wait, one moment. In the beginning. This was the absolute beginning. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, God did what? Created the heaven and the earth. Okay. And the earth was without form. Now wait one minute. God created the heaven and the earth. And then what does it say after that in verse 2? And the earth was without form. Okay, so this is a point of demarcation because the scripture says that whatever God creates, his word does not return void. Amen? So if God, what does it say again? In the beginning, God created the what? The heaven and the earth. What's the next word? And the earth was without form. And void. Stop right there. So if God created the heavens and the earth, and whatever God creates does not return unto him void, the earth was without form and void, verse 2. And then what it says about that darkness? And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Okay, stop. Wait a minute right there. Darkness. Another word for darkness is ignorance. Hmm. And that's what we're going to deal with today. Dealing with ignorance and darkness. Now, God, in the beginning, created the heavens and the earth. Yes. And the earth was without form and void and ignorance. So where did this ignorance, where did this darkness come from? Okay. Was upon the face of the what? Deep. And read. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Amen. So it has a... a, a uh, a reaction and an action. Amen. The first action was God created the heavens and the earth. Then the reaction was the earth was without form and void. And then also a, uh, a part of that reaction was darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, there's another reaction to that reaction, which is a proactive action by God, it says God, the Spirit of God did what? Moved. Upon, okay? Upon the face of the waters. Okay, that, that word it said God moved upon the face of the word waters. That Hebrew word moved is like hover. Hover over the face of the water. So God is hovering over the darkness. Yes. So this is God creating something and then he turned around and seeing that it's messed up. Hmm. So he hovered. He moved upon the face of the waters. And what? In verse 3? And 
God said, let there be light, and there was light. Amen. God turned around a proactive re uh, reaction to this to this darkness coming upon the, his creation, and, and he created light. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, get Psalms thirty three and six real quick. We're gonna um, look in how how the earth actually the the world it says here the the heavens and the earth was created. It just shows you uh, that they were created. This is history right. in the beginning. Amen. So when you get Psalms 33 and 6, just read verses 6 through 9. Verse 6, Psalms 33 and 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Okay. God created the heavens, the earth, by what? By the breath of his mouth. Amen? And by his word. So we know that in the book of Isaiah, we're just going to get that also, where it says that Isaiah, it says that um, his word shall not return unto him void. Amen? Whatever it comes out shall not shall prosper amen so when God speaks a thing then that thing is true and yea and amen mm -hmm. but sometimes the thing that he speaks it doesn't look in the form as as what God has created mm -hmm. like this world like maybe you and might like maybe me mm -hmm. so we need to change there's a change that has to take place because there's an intruder. And this intruder has in his heart malice. And this malice comes from pride. Now let's look into what this intruder, um, who this intruder is. Just get Isaiah 14 verses 12 through 14. We're going to look at this intruder who has malice in his heart. Who tries to mess up everything that God creates. Amen. Even the things that you create that God tells you to do. Even the things that God has put in your hands to, this intruder comes and tries to mess it up. Amen. Right. So we need to we need to unveil. We need to do a, a unveiling. That's what the word revelation actually means. To unveil who this intruder is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Isaiah 14, 12. Says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did this weaken the nations? Okay, what did he do? He weakened who? The nations. The nations. He weakened the people. See, God looks at us, he either looks at you as uh, 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 Israel or um, a nation's or the church you're in one of those three categories amen you either the church you're the nations or you are Israel those are the three category God views men men in and so it says Lucifer did what he weakened he weakened the nations he weakened the inhabitants of the earth that means he weakened everybody So it says, Lucifer, son of the morning. What it says, verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. 14. Yes. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Okay. Now, this is the, the great error. This is the origin of sin. This was done in an a, a angel's heart. Lucifer was an angel. The son of the morning is a title of an angel. And some say that he was an archangel, along with Michael and Gabriel. 
It says, but Lucifer was the son of the morning, and he was cut down to the ground. Based on. Which said, which did weaken the nations. Mm -hmm. He weakened the nations. Now, we're going to talk about that later, about the day star, because the day star actually is Jesus. Yeah. Amen. So in some translations, a day star is, is uh, referred to as Lucifer, but that's, a, that's again... Lucifer trying to usurp the throne of Jesus. All right, he's a counterfeit. He's not real. Amen. He 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 works on fear. He works on intimidation. He works on manipulation. He works to dominate you. He works to get you off of what God has called you to do and what God has called you to be. Now, in verse of uh, in um, Revelation twelve nine, it says. So the great dragon was thrown out, that ancient serpent. Now this in revelation corresponds to Isaiah when it says that he was thrown out. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at time, we're looking at the beginning. So this throwing out had to happen between the beginning and the present day. So we look at this happening when Lucifer was thrown out, falling from heaven. In Genesis 1 and 2, when it says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Mm -hmm. This brought a catastrophic change in the atmosphere. This brought a catastrophic change into what God has created. All right. Lucifer being thrown onto the earth. Now God created the heavens and the earth and whatever God creates is pure, beautiful, whole and perfect. So the earth became without form and void when who hit the ground? When it says that he was cut down to the ground, Isaiah said. Mm -hmm. So this caused the earth to become without form and void. Now there was a cause. The Bible says that he said in his heart. So Isaiah, let's read Isaiah 28 real quick. 28 and 17. Now, there was a cause. Isaiah says that he said in his heart. So he said in his heart, but we know that he also put it in operation because in Revelations it says that he drew one third of the angels. Amen. So not only did he say it in his heart, he carried it out the plan, influencing others to follow his wicked plan mm. so Satan tries to talk to us he tried Lucifer talks to us and tries to get us to to uh, uh, go with him because he do not he doesn't know the future amen if he knew the future he wouldn't he would have predict his downfall he's not a prophet amen we got more power than him because many of us have that gift of prophecy. Many of us, God has, has, has called us to see. Yes. Not everyone, but to see. Mm -hmm. Lucifer does not see. That's why he, he relies on things like manipulation, intimidation. And one thing he does is, is uh, ear hustle. Try to get, get you to speak and speak and know and try to reveal, get you to reveal what God is doing in your life and what what plans God so he could come and do what? Mess them up. Mm. So let's just read Ezekiel 28, 17. Isaiah? No, Ezekiel 28 and 17. Ezekiel. Yes, Ezekiel 28 and 17 is the cause of Satan's fall. The cause of his fall, um, of course, Isaiah says that he, he, he was, he said he's, he had said in his heart, Revelation says that he actually drew one third of the angels. But Ezekiel 28, 17 reads, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. So again, he's on the ground. Satan, uh, Satan, now Satan was Lucifer, is on the ground. Because what he said in his heart, his heart became proud. This is where the origin, the origin became 
uh, was because of pride, because of getting yourself out of place, um, wanting the, the authority of God. Amen. When God spoke to Moses and the children of Israel, at top of the Ten Commandments was, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Yes. Thou shalt not make any graven image. Or a likeness of anything upon the earth, and then upon the earth and the sea and the, and the land, any wings, beasts, anything of rock, anything of stone, anything of wood. Do not fall down and worship things you can, you can make out of your hand, your jobs, whatever it may be. The things that we hold more dear to God is an idol and an abomination to Him. Yes. Amen. So even when we try to reach for authority that is not in our um, dominion mm -hmm. amen God orders our steps yes. but sometimes we try to order our own steps amen yes. so his heart became proud and we know that Satan had influence because well when he was Lucifer he influenced the angels he has influence mm -hmm. and influence is a form of power but uh, this, this, this earth was given over to him by our predecessor Adam if you can uh, go to Ephesians 2 and 2 we can talk about how Satan if you could get that um, hun, how Satan and how how's, how the atmospheric domain is now in his clutches you ever notice how some people how the, how the wicked people rise to the top it seems that the, the, the people who are, are just in a pure heart and those people are following Jesus following the steps it seems like many times we struggle yes. amen but God has given us doors God has opened up windows of heaven God is making a way of escape for us so that we can be with him when it's all said and done Praise God. Satan's influence Ephesians 2 and 2 could you read that please Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Amen. So this world is given over to the prince, to the prince of the power of the air. The prince of the power of the air is everything that's popular, that's the world is going in the, in the broad way. Amen. But the, the narrow road leads to life. Well. So we previously walked in this way. We walked with the crowd according to this worldly age. Mm -hmm. But God, Jesus has provided a way that we can walk toward God in a pure fashion that's approved by him, by God the Father. Yes. Amen? So this, this age is coming to an end. This age is going to come to the end, to an end, and those who follow Satan, uh, we're going to find out what happens to them in Revelation 20, verse 1 through 3. Could you read that? Uh, uh, while you're getting that, Satan is bound. He's going to be bound. So all of these things, uh, it's better to, to, uh, to suffer the afflictions of righteousness to, than to enjoy sin for a season. Because when it's all said and done, you would rather be with God and the people of God because Satan is going to be bound. Mm. Satan is already defeated. Yes. Jesus said it is finished. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got that? Yes. Revelation 21 through 3. <clears throat> and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So... This is a time when Satan, see, this says a lot right here, the scripture. Yes. Because it, it talks about, we said that he has influence. Mm -hmm. Amen. The archangel, once no, formerly known as Lucifer, who is now Satan, he has a lot of influence upon this earth. Yes. And it says that if 
if he would go away, which happens here in verse 2, he was bound for a thousand years. So he was closed up in an abyss. Mm -hmm. So when that period of time happened, the nations were no longer deceived. Amen. There was no, see, he is the father of lies. Yes. Amen. So when the father disappears, then the nations are no longer deceived. Amen. So imagine if every lie just left the earth. That's what it's going to be like. And you can tell when every lie leaves the earth, then Satan's influence will be finished. Yeah. But it says that after that, read verse 10. Verse 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Praise God. Amen. We're talking about the ceasing of ignorance and darkness. Mm -hmm. Dealing with ignorance and darkness. You know, many times it's hard to deal with ignorance and darkness. Yeah. And many times if you're a rational type of person and, you know, you, you look at things in a rational sense, then you hate to have ignorance and darkness around you mm -hmm. because God hates it and if you're a person of God you would hate ignorance and darkness too yeah. so it says here the devil who deceived them so deception manipulation lies all these things going to be out of here yeah. amen it's going to be out of here so if you in that in that that cool in that uh, conglomeration you're going to be out of here too so it says they were it said who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet are and they will be tormented tor sorry tormented day and night forever and ever yes so Satan is defeated Jesus came and restored us to the right way yes this is important and we know that everything that goes on in this world has is is is, is somehow influenced, mm -hmm. influenced. So, but we got a paracletus. We have God. A whole, we have the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. here to lead us and guide us and navigate us through, navigate us through the dangers, the pitfalls, the precipices, any dangerous oil slicks. Danger seen and unseen. The Holy Spirit is here to guide you and lead you through all these things until the time comes when the devil is thrown into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. So we need to walk adroitly. We need to walk um, um, circumspectly That's it. until the time when God says, well done. Yes. It's tough. It's hard. It's difficult. But you're not the only one who's suffering. We all have a cross to bear. And we need to bear that cross, keeping in mind that one day we're going to be with God and be with Christ. Be with, we're with the Holy Spirit now. We're going to be with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in a much better place. Yes. Away from every lie, manipulation, intimidation, deceit, all this foolishness. Thank dealing you. with darkness. Dealing with ignorance. Mm. Dealing with darkness. People who have darkness in their heart. Who got schemes. Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we are the predestined church. We can find that out in Ephesians chapter 1. If you can get that. Ephesians chapter 1. We are the predestined church. Yes. Like I said before. God looks at you either as. Israel. As the church. Or as the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. The world is deceived. Um, Israel was the Messiah came through Israel and the church is predestined to reign mm -hmm. and Christ is the head of the church yes okay read verse 4 Ephesians 1 verse 4 according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love amen we were chose before the foundation of the world to be what holy and without blame okay stop right there we were chose 
before the foundation of the world to do what? That we should be holy and without blame. But how about when they say nobody's perfect? Is that an excuse not to be holy? Holy and without blame. When somebody says they doing it too. Holy and without blame. And somebody says it don't take all that. Holy and without blame. And where? In his before sight? Before him in love. My, my Bible says in sight. In his sight. And where is God's sight? That's everywhere. And in love. Okay, read verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Amen. So God reveals his will to his church. This is information that the world does not have. This is information that uh, the devil do not have. Amen. This information needs to be utilized by his church. To what? To move forward in this dark world. To be a prosperous nation. To be kings and priests. Mm -hmm. To show other people the way. Mm -hmm. Why should the world have all the wealth? Why should the world have all the... the, the, the um, the riches and, and the houses and the land, when the stuff that is, is hidden, God reveals it to us. Yes. We are given the keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. If we're getting the keys to the kingdom of heaven, why can't we have the keys to the kingdom upon the earth? What's the problem? Houston, we have a problem. Mm. So verse 10, what does that say? That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Amen. Uh, say that again. Read that again. It, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Amen. So in the fullness of time, that's a dispensation. The dispensation is a period of time in which man is tested into the will of God what he wants from us during that dispensation. So this dispensation is the dispensation of the fullness of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's going to be the harvest. There's going to be a harvest and the harvest is going to come and he's going to take out his church. It's going to happen so quick. It's going to be like this. He's going to snatch his church into what? Fullness of time. Mm -hmm. So what? The multifaceted wisdom. See, God has multifaceted wisdom. What the Satan has, and Lucifer, he has multifaceted temptations. Mm -hmm. So he's either dealing with multifaceted wisdom or multifaceted temptations. So we dealing with wisdom that gives you the answer. That's the best thing you can ask for, according to one of the wisest men that ever lived. If the, not the wisest man, Solomon, he requested God for wisdom. He his request was for God to give him wisdom. Yes. The builder of the temple, the crowning glory, glory, the greatest building that was ever created on the earth by man's hands, the temple of Solomon. Amen? Amen. The multifaceted wisdom not now be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in the heavens. Mm. We are that nation. We are that priesthood. Amen? Right now. So we need to seek God while he may be found. Yes. We need to call upon him while he is near. Yes. Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts. The unrighteous man forsake his thoughts mm -hmm. and return unto God. Mm -hmm. He will have mercy yes, will. upon him and to and from our God, and he will abundantly pardon you. Yes. It's nothing like a pardon. Imagine if you were on death row. Imagine if you were have a serving a life sentence. And they said, a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Mm. Amen. Many people are serving that now. Mm -hmm. But there, when you have something, we have a thing called faith. We have something called hope. It gives you the ability not to give up on what man said. Yes. 
Because don't you know, many of those sentences are reversed. Because the, the final judge is God. Amen? So as far as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways. God's ways are higher than what? Your ways. Mm -hmm. Higher than my ways. And, your, and my thoughts and your thoughts. It's, the scripture says in Isaiah 55 and 10, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not thither, but waters the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. The Bible says, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. This is God speaking. Mm -hmm. So he's comparing the word unto water, which comes down and waters the earth and the plants grow. This is how God's word works. It shall not return void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. You know what? I stop saying it's nasty outside. You know, when it's raining, I don't say that no more. Because the plants don't say it. The trees don't say it. The grass love it. Ducks love it. So why, 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 why am I in my mind and my heart saying it's nasty? Or it's, it's, it's bad, it's ugly out? No, somebody, this is this is what God compares his word to. Water coming down from earth and snow from heaven. All right. And returns not thither. So when it falls down, it don't come back. Mm -hmm. You ever see raindrops going up? Mm -hmm. You ever see snow coming up, going up? No. But when it falls, it falls for a purpose. It waters that what it hits. And you know what? God gave us the ability to water. He gave us the ability to, to, to plant. Yeah. But you know what? Only God's word can add the increase. All right. Because you don't know what's going to be prosperous, either this or that. Amen? You don't know if this one may look good and prosperous, got a college degree, Colgate smile, got everything going on, but you don't know what's going to happen. Mm. Amen? It says that it make it it bring forth and bud. God's word brings forth buds. I wish I could show you the pictures of those pears that we that came forth. Now just a few years ago the tree was just a little sapling. But now it has big pears on it, branches that's falling, hanging down, some of them touching the ground, full of pears. Mm -hmm. Amen. The only thing we had to do was let it sit out there and the rain takes care of that. Yes. We, we only fertilize one. It's just the rain. But you know what? The pears are all over the place. Amen? Yes, yes they are. Praise God. So that's the word. Go forth out of his mouth. It shall not return void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Now, 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 now read Genesis 1 and 1 again. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning. In the beginning. Amen. God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, stop right there. Proceed. And the earth was without form and void. Okay, stop right there. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Pause. Then it says, and the earth was without form and void. So if God created the heavens by the breath of his nostrils, by his word, it says the heavens were made by the word of the Lord and all the stars by the breath of his mouth. So if this happened, why, how did the earth become without form and void? We already answered that question. The fall of Lucifer. Yeah. Because the word that comes out, it shall not return void. But you know what? When things, you try to do something right or things are 
you try to set up something, you, you're building a house or doing whatever project, something always seems to come along to set you a step back. It happened to God. If it happened to God, it's going to happen to you. But you need, we need to look at this strategy that God put into it to defeat those things that cause what he created to go void. Yes, he's defeated. So, God sent Jesus to deal with ignorance and darkness. Mm -hmm. Get John 1, chapter 1. Uh, 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Oh, amen, amen. So okay, amen. proceed. The same was in the beginning with God. Amen, proceed. Uh, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. Stop right there. So, God hovered upon the face of the waters. Amen? And God said, let there be light. So the light shined in the darkness. And we see early, later in Genesis where God separated the, the day from the night. Amen? He separated the darkness from the light. So there's a difference between the darkness and the light. But you know what? It says the darkness don't understand the light. So the world is never going to understand you. Amen? All right. So God sent Jesus to deal with darkness. Mm -hmm. And he said it is finished. You know our salvation was a byproduct. But God. Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan. That was his purpose. To destroy the works of Satan. Yeah. And God gave unto us power. He said behold I give unto you power. To tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by, shall by any means hurt you. Amen. So it, it was in this world that God made us victor, victors. Amen. So I just want to I just want to leave with you tonight that there's a way out of out of this situation, uh, the negativity, and dealing with darkness and dealing with ignorance. It might make you a little. I, I'm not gonna say crazy, but it try to make you crazy. Try to set you off your square, try to make you something that, you, that God didn't create, it, create you to be. Amen. But you need to continue with God because God will lead you through this dark world. Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. It's kind of lengthy tonight. We went about 40 minutes, but God is good. God is good. He's on the throne. We're going to move forward with our service on tonight. And we, um, if, you, if you have any, uh, if, if you want to uh, contribute any offerings to our church you can go to dollar sign b e r e a c o g i c three at cash app and you can contribute you can see our logo on there we do appreciate we will uh, continue to uh, keep you in our prayer and uh, i see uh brother young um um chimed in and uh, brother uh brother from nigeria uh, brother wilson he made our logo god bless you brother wilson and um, I do see uh, some others here. But we just thank God for you on today. Uh, we're praying for you. Continue to keep us in prayer. And um, remember, keep God first, and you will never go wrong. Amen? And he, he, because he'll lead you. Amen? Lead you and guide you into all truth. God bless you, and may God be a blessing in your life. Amen. 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 Praise God.